So hello and welcome to the computer lab. So in today's video, I'm going to be looking at the Silicon Dust HD Home Run Duo. Now this is the one with the twin tuners, the Duo model. There is a quad version available as well. What I'm going to be doing in this video is showing the unboxing, showing you what you get for your money in the box. And then I'm going to be connecting it to my home network and an aerial so it can receive the over the air signals. I'm going to show you what um, channels you receive in the UK. Um, and I'm going to also going to implement that within Plex. So looking around the internet, it looks like Plex is the way to go with this. Silicon Dust does offer a an app that you can watch within the iOS devices um, and stuff like that. So I'm going to try and test that at the end of the video as well because it'd be interesting to see how it handles the bandwidth going through your network, uh, showing the pictures coming straight from the tuner. Uh, so I'm going to try and show that at the end. Uh, but my primary objective is to install the HD Home Room duo onto my network, install the tuner within Plex and then set that up to record to a NAS drive. So obviously if that is something you're interested in or if you're just interested in trying to get sort of over the uh, signals around the house so you can control them and watch it on different devices then maybe this video is for you. Obviously this particular product was purchased by myself, it wasn't sent to me in any way. So I purchased this directly from Amazon. And in the interest of openness, I will be putting an affiliate link in the description box below. Uh, and obviously if you click on that link, you won't pay any more. It just means I get a small kickback from my channel and uh, from the profits that goes towards my channel. Um, so without any further ado, let's get into the video. So like I said earlier, this was bought directly from Amazon. Uh, and it strangely comes in this white nondescript box. And you can only tell it's a HD Home Run official product is because it's got this hologram sticker on the end, which I've already cut through. So let's get it opened and see what else you get in the box. So you get the unit itself. The tuner is quite small, as you can see in my hands. Uh, it's obviously got HD Home Run uh, imprinted on the front. Uh, this is the UK version. So you get the um, push-in RF cable there, just to the left. You then get the Ethernet cable uh, plug-in. And then just to the right of that, you get the DC jack input there. So nothing else at all on the unit. That's all it is. So quite a small unit. Obviously, it's got a barcode on the underside there. So not a lot else you can say about it. There's nothing really on it. Um, no screens or anything like that. You also get a quick start guide in the box, uh, which I will take a photograph of in a second and just do a quick close up so you can see what it says on the quick start guide. Let's have a look what else we get in the box. I'll just take this bit of cardboard out. And you get a small power adapter, which is nice that it's this size and it's nice that it's also a UK plug. Sometimes they have adapters on them um, and obviously you get your small power supply. It just goes in like so. That's so quite a nice, tidy, small unit, really. Uh, and you also get a Cat 5e in the box. So surprise, not Cat 6, but anyway, it's Cat 5e. Um, and that's it. That's all you get for your money. So the only way you can tell it's a sort of a new product, well, in official, it's, it actually says new on the box there. So I'm presuming they stuck that on so you can tell it is a new unit because like I say, it's, um, you normally expect to see some branding on this type of thing. But anyway, that's, uh, that's the actual unboxing. Let's just do a close up of the quick start guide. So you can see on the quick start guide and the instructions that you can actually download the um, HD Home Run software for from the Windows Store. You can download it on the iOS store for your iOS Apple devices. Also on your Android in the Google Play Store. And also apparently it works on the Amazon devices. So that's uh, good to know. They're trying to cover all the bases. So let's get the unit uh, plugged in. So I'm plugging it directly into a 12-way distribution amplifier. So basically just a 12-way aerial input. I've got my home network here. Uh, so I've got a 24-port PoE switch. I don't need to be POE for this, but you see I've got a patch panel, 24 port. I've also got my router, which is by Sky here. Uh, that's my uh, 24 port switch. And you can see I've, got, I've left a sport, <laughs> I've left a port spare there to plug into. So that's where I'm going to plug in my HD home run into. You might just be going directly into your router, uh, but I'm going into my switch there. So yeah, so that's they're going to be the sort of setup. So Ariel's going into my amplifier here to the left, uh, and I'm just going to put it into the one that I've got spare. All the other ones that are going off around the house, that's just sending obviously the aerial around the house to all the standard sort of TVs that, are, that have gotten around the house, scattered around the house. So I'm just going to plug in my home run uh, into the F-type connector there, screw it into there and then plug the other end into my HD home run. As you can see, I've already got my power supply plugged in and ready to go. Uh, so I just need to screw my aerial 
Uh, this is like I said, this is an F type connector on this one. So I'm just going to screw it in here, try and keep it steady because I'm one handed. Uh, like so. So that's one end of the aerial connected into my aerial. You might just be plugging it into a splitter or something like that, or your normal aerial. Uh, but like I said, I've just got the ability to do it through the amplifier. And then I'm going to plug the other end into my pushing connector, like so. And I'm also going to put my Ethernet cable in to the HD home run one handed again so there we go and then i'm just going to plug the other end of my um cat six cable into my um 24 port switch so like i see yours might be going into the directly into the back of the router but mine's going into my switch uh, so the whole other network can see it uh, incidentally my wi-fi is also powered from that same switch so it's all on the same network so there we go we've now got the hd home run duo connected up via the RJ45 Ethernet cable going into the back of my unit there. I've got the aerial coming into my HD home run from my uh, splitter here, my amplifier, and I just need to plug the power cable in. Uh, let's get the thing powered up. There's no on-off switch on the unit itself. Obviously, I can switch it on and off on the plug socket, but I'll just plug it in live and then see what we've got. And hopefully, we should see it start to flash. Let's go on. Uh, as it starts to flash, hopefully, we, it, uh, we'll get an IP address and we'll find that out. So what I'll do now, we're all uh, flashing and hopefully got an IP address. I'll open up the, uh, install the HD Home Run app on my uh, Apple device, which is an iPhone 8. Uh, you can do it on iPads and stuff like that. So this is the actual uh, app. So I'm going to open it up and I'm going to allow the HD Home Run access to my network. And hopefully we should see the picture. So this is the picture directly from the HD Home Run app. You change the channels from the EPG on the right. So you just double tap and it changes the channel. I'm not going to go into too much detail because obviously mine's about running this HD Home Run within Plex. So like I say, you can change channels. Um, it's on BBC One at the moment in the UK. If I change it to channel two by double tapping on it, you'll see it change over. Um, so yeah, so the tuner looks really clear on a small screen. So, but the point of this video is to install the tuner in Plex. So I think if we open Plex up, and I'll show you what you're presented with first, because Plex doesn't detect the HD Home Run until you tell it to detect the actual tuner itself. So you see, I'm in the live TV. I'm in Plex, logged into my server, and I'm on live TV on Plex. Now this is purely the ones that Plex supplies. So this is nothing to do with the tuner. These are the ones that are distributed over the internet um, through. Plex servers on this guide that you can see here. So the next step is to uh, tell Plex where the tuner is. So I'm going to go up to my settings in the top right hand corner, click on that uh, settings tab and I'm going to go down to the bottom left hand corner. And I've got live TV and DVR so I'm going to click on that. So that's within the manage group. So I'll click on that live TV and DVR and I've got this option now to set up Plex DVR. So if you are following along and wanting to do the same within Plex, you need to know that you need to have a lifetime pass or be subscribed to Plex. So I'm going to click on set up Plex DVR and you can see straight away uh, Plex has found my HD Home Run Connect Duo uh, tuner and it's also got the IP address underneath. So that's great. It's already ticked. So I'm just going to click on continue. And I've got the DVR setup menu. So it's found 163 channels. Obviously, if it doesn't look right or it hasn't found enough, I can click on scan channels. But I'll just cl click on the country here. You can see the list of countries that are available. Um, so depending on where you are in the world, there is a large selection on the country list that we can pick from. Obviously, I'm in the United Kingdom, so I'm going to leave it on there. And you can see there are 163 channels. If I wanted to do, I can rescan it there. I'll flick through the channels and just make sure everything looks like it should do. But with that amount of channels, I would say that um, I'm fairly comfortable it's got them all. And also it has the HD channels, which you can see lower down here. Uh, so that's great as well. So I'm going to click on continue. Put my postcode in. I'm in the UK, so I'm just going to put the postcode in. Language is English. And that's so it can identify, can you see there, so it can download the electronic guide. So in the UK, we work off electronic guides per region. So uh, I'm going to leave my postcode in, click on continue. And now it's hunting uh, around for the best guides for my postcode. So there is several suppliers of the guide uh, that will work with free over the air uh, channels in the UK. So I've got lots of options in the guides up here. I can pick different ones. So you can see there's a full list, not going to go into them, but there's Skies in there, there's Freeview, FreeSat. I'm just going to leave it on the local broadcast listings, the one it had picked up already. But the Freeview one could be a good one to use, uh, but I'll leave it on the local one. 
And then in this DVR setup section, if there's any channels that are mislabeled on the right, you can actually tell it to pick a different um, sort of channel for the one that it's labeled it as. So for example, that number seven, it wasn't ticked. Uh, I'm not that bothered about that's TV, but if you wanted to highlight it, you could tick that and then pick off the list which one you wanted it to be for channel seven. So you can play around with the channel listings in that way. Uh, like I say, you can scroll all the way through these and just make sure you've got them all. Uh, you see the HD channels coming up now. Just make sure you've got all the channels that you need. Uh, it's as simple as that. Um, once you've done gone through the list and made sure that you've got all the channels that you need, you just click on the continue button. So once you click on the continue button at this stage, uh, this actual DVR setup can take an absolute age to do. When I say an absolute age, probably half an hour or so, depending on how many channels it's looking for and trying to implement into Plex. So I'm going to skip this part of the video. Uh, you can see it's initializing at the moment, uh, but I had to leave it for, I think it's about half an hour, 40 minutes for it to populate the actual guide with all the correct listings. Um, so yeah, make sure you give that time to do the actual guide setup. So now I'm going to go back into Plex uh, and then just show you the actual guide within here. So I now got a new section which is called Live TV, uh, Live TV and DVR, which you can see on the screen now. Uh, and this actual menu now has all my listings in the guide. I can also click on the Today icon there and I can obviously pick which day that I want. Interestingly, there's only a week's worth of the guide available. I've then also got all channels are HD only, so if I pick up HD only, I can get the listings of my high definition ones uh, for, like I said, these are UK channels, so high definition channels in the UK. Or I can put it back onto all channels by just clicking on the little arrow there and then click on all again. Wait for it to populate. Um, you can see the channels are just to the right of it. I've also got a what's on tab, a guide and my DVR schedule. So if I just click on the what's on, this is quite a nice menu in the what's on. Um, it looks very similar as well on the iPad and iPhone. Just give it time just to populate. Um, just so you know, I'm running my Plex server on a Synology DS214 Play. So it's an old Synology unit. So it's not the quickest unit out there. If you're wondering, it's taking a bit just to go from menu to menu. But that's the what's on guide. If I click on DVR schedule, there's nothing scheduled to record at the moment. And if I go to the guide, so the next bit is how do I record? So on the actual channel itself, you've got a play button and a circle. So you click on the circle when it goes red like so, and then it brings up the recording options box. So obviously you can pick this episode or all the episodes in this series. If you click all episodes, you then get options for new airings only or repeat ones. So I'll put that back on this episode. You've got add to library. So if you've got libraries set up, uh, you can add it to the libraries you want to do. Click on the advanced section, you've then got prefer HD or HD only, so high definition only. You've got an option to replace your low resolutions. You've got one for allowing partial airing, so it's not the full um, program. You've got minutes, so you can buffer the start and the end. So if you make sure you don't want to miss it, uh, miss the beginning or the end, you can buffer the end if you've got plenty of hard drive space. You can limit to channels, and you can see there, if you've got the same program on multiple different channels, you can have it to record on any of them. Um, obviously air in time so you can make sure your tuner doesn't cross over and then this detect commercials you can actually have Plex remove the commercials now obviously mine's a Synology DS214 play it's not powerful enough really because uh, you can see in the description there it can cause high CPU usage so it's a good thing that it's built in uh, but make sure you've got the power uh, to run that on your Plex server. So at this point I can hit the record button at like so now I purposely left this in because this is what I tried first. I tried to record this program here and then I added another program in which I will show you in a second and they both came up with this error message which is um, shown with that exclamation mark just there. Uh, and this error message was uh, happening because I hadn't defined um, a drive that gave Plex permission to write from the tuner. So obviously if you're not running Plex on a Synology, you don't have to follow this next bit, but let's go on to the Synology uh, user interface and I'm gonna show you what I had to do. So I went in to my file listing, uh, the file station. So depending on what you're recording, if it's recording movies or TV shows that record into two separate areas. Now you might have yours se separately, but I'm saving mine into video and then into movie, if it's a movie. So I highlight the folder I want, right click on it, and go to properties and then when I'm in properties I go to permission and then in permissions you can see all the different things and people that have got permissions to this folder so I just need to click on create and then user or group at the top 
And then from here, I want to find the one that says Plex. So I'm going to find the one that says Plex. I'm going to tick that box there. And that will give this folder, give Plex permissions over this folder to uh, read or write or whatever permissions we give it in a second. So let's run through it from the beginning. So user and group, pick up the Plex server out of the user and group. It should be in there already if you've already got Plex installed. So find it in your list. Once you've found it, put a small tick in it like so and once you've got it highlighted you can just click out of the folder to the left or right and then that will populate the user and group inherit you can inherit it from someone if you want the type if you want to allow or deny we want to allow it you can click on apply to this folder child folder child files or all descendants so i'm going to leave it on all and then i'm going to tick administration rights read rights and write rights click on the okay and then click on the okay again and this will then tell Synology that you want Plex to have full rights to send information backward and forward from that folder, which in my case was the movie folder. Yours might be different. So once I've given the uh, Synology drive or Plex the permissions to write to the Synology drive, I then picked up um, just on another program in my guide to record to. I think it was the channel 2 up here. I think I recorded that one. Uh, so yeah, I went up, clicked on record, and then brings a menu up that we saw earlier and then just clicked on record here didn't really play in any menus and as soon as I did that and then went over across to my DVR schedule it is now uh, showing up that it is able to record to that folder that Plex is sending it to on my NAS drive and you can see the red dot there indicates it's recording so there's no exclamation mark now and it also brings like a yellow bar that goes all the way around the red dot to show you that it is recording obviously if it's scheduled to record early you won't see the yellow line come around but you can see that the yellow dot's just starting to appear um so yeah that's great that it's uh, doing that and it is now recording and i have tested it since uh, and the file structures with the permissions is working great now it was given permissions to do so now i know this video has dragged on quite a bit already we're going to be at the 20 minutes mark by the time i'm finished but i thought it was um interesting to show you this part so on the left hand side i've got my plex uh, monitoring up on the right hand side i've got my synology drive uh, the monitoring up there and you can see at the moment it's currently not playing anything back at all uh, and everything uh, the cpu has dropped down i was testing so that's why you can see the spikes are in there so what i'm going to do i'm going to open the app um the uh, plex app on my phone and i'm going to hit the uh, play button on the recording that i was just showing you that i recorded earlier so that was in bbc2 hd um in the uk obviously i'm going to turn my phone sideways um, and then you should be able to see the actual if i just put the image out of the way you can see it as it starts to play now so it's starting to play the program that we recorded so now it's streaming this directly from my Plex server. And like I said earlier, bearing in mind this is a Synology DS214 play, it plays it back fine without any stuttering. Obviously the bandwidth's gone up, um, so you can see there. But the actual CPU on the uh, Synology drive is not really taking too much pain. Uh, it's more the bandwidth, um, sending this high definition feed from the Plex server. So I wouldn't have said um, it could do two feeds at once. Uh, I think it would probably start stuttering and stuff like that, especially on the initial phase, because you notice on the bandwidth, it goes right up. Um, and once it starts playing and gets everything sort of loaded, it then sort of comes down to a nice steady level. So uh, I thought it was interesting to show you guys what you see when you start playing back. And the one last thing that I wanted to show you guys was the HD Home Run app running on a Roku stick. It just doesn't run well and there's some issues with it. Um, when I had a look on the HD Home Run forum, um, there were what I think HD Home Run or Silicon Dust was blaming Plex um, uh, or Roku, one or the other. Uh, but either way, you can see that I just added the channel into my Roku stick. Uh, and what happens is when you play back a channel, uh, you end up with bars on the left hand right and side like you're watching uh, like you're looking at your phone sort of in portrait mode instead of being in landscape mode so it's like this not getting the signal to put it into um widescreen or anything like that so you see at the moment i've opened the app on the roku stick it's discovering the devices and it lists the channels up even the channel selection here in this app it's not very good uh, it only lets you go along, scroll along the bottom so then when you go into the actual channel you can then pick from that list uh, so it gives you the overview above it what you'd expect to take your cursor up there or your box up there to be able to select so it's just not very intuitive i won't be using the app on the roku stick anyway i might use it on the phone because it works quite well on the phone on the ipad uh, but i won't be using it on the roku stick i just thought it was interesting to show you so you could see it working 
Um, obviously, you'll see the picture come up in a second. Uh, and it doesn't show like this when I'm using it on the Plex app on the Roku stick. It shows normally, so it works fine with the Plex. It's just that my system isn't powerful enough to record and show the picture at the same time because I'm using that DS214 Play, the old Synology drive. So that's it. That's H Silicon Dust HD Home Run uh, over the air tuner set up on Plex and on a Synology drive. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please do give us a thumbs up. Please, please do subscribe to my channel. Hit me up with any comments below. They are always appreciated. And thanks again for visiting the Computer Lab.